This episode will teach you some of the nuances of using the BioClear technique. Now, the BioClear technique, I'm sure many of you know already, are these uh, clear, transparent matrices uh, which have a, a beautiful curve on it. I believe it's a patented technology, but it was invented by Dr. David Clark, and these are just absolutely phenomenal ways to close black triangles and also just class fours. They've also got their anterior and posterior set. So really what this technique has uh, proven now is that layering might be dead, or rather layering is is less called for, less needed for, because when you have these fantastic uh, monoblock restorations with the strength and aesthetics, you really have to have a strong argument towards going for layering instead. So I'm joined by the Prince of Egypt, Dr. Dr. Abdurrahman Tofik, who's gonna just talk about some techniques for success when we're starting with the bioclay technique, how to get a nice finish, a few little tips that he taught me in terms of mesial and distal, and how to connect those to make the restoration look uh, as, as good as possible. So I'll share one of my sort of failures and Dr. Abdurrahman will correct it and teach me how I could improve it for next time. So I hope you enjoy this episode all about getting the best from BioClear Technique with Dr. Abdurrahman Tofik. Abdurrahman, thank you so much for coming to a Protrusive Dental Podcast. It is so, so cool to have you. I really appreciate, appreciate you accepting my, uh, my invitation. Uh, and I just want to set the scene for everyone, okay? I want to set the scene for everyone because there might be some dentists out there, very few, uh, who, may, who don't know who you are, right? So... In the UK, when someone says the Prince of Egypt in the UK, in the UK, people think of Mohammed Salah, right? <laughs> they think he is the Prince of Egypt. When someone says Prince of Egypt, only you come to my mind, okay? So, so th that's what I think. But of course, you're not the Prince of Egypt, you're the Prince of Composite uh, in Egypt. Your, your you know, resin work is absolutely phenomenal. And I, yeah. I, you know, me, I mean, when I posted today uh, on my page that, hey, Abdul Rahman's gonna come live today. Uh, I had quite a few messages like Chris O'Connor, Chris might be tuning in right now. He's a very good dentist up in North. He said, wow, he's my, one of my favorite dentists uh, who uses matrices and resins in the way he does. So you've got a bit of a name in the UK already, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to introduce more of my audience to you. But um, before I babble on, Abdurrahman, tell us a little bit about you, uh, where you work, and how you got into BioClip, which is what we're talking about today. So uh, my name is Abdurrahman. I work in this, uh, a city like uh, the one and a half hour from Cairo. This is my hometown. And uh, uh, I got involved with, him, with the bike clear like seven uh, years ago, 2013. That's almost eight years now. So uh, uh, this is my first uh, start to do composite uh, restoration because before that I was an honest. So I, I didn't like to do uh, uh, resin too much because it was uh, too much difficult to to get to, uh, out of all the problem, like to get the paint, the color, the matching, the finishing. So uh, uh, when I saw the posters in the Facebook about Bikeley, I like it, so I bought it from US, but uh, I couldn't uh, um, like play with it in a proper way. So, uh, uh, I, you know, self-learning from um, uh, the post in Facebook and uh, contact with David Clark for like two years and started to do the, to take the course with David in Italy. And after that, I went to US for like six, seven times, like improving my skills. Uh, until I uh, I was able to uh, to be like doing in in the proper way with the bike clean methods. So this is how it's this is, was like a coincidence, thanks to the Facebook. Because before that I, I didn't like uh, to do composite filling. I was only in the dentist. Well, you've taken it really. You took it really on your grasp. And I think when people see your beautiful cases. You know, and they maybe sometimes get inspired. Like I might have seen your case one day. I was like, wow, I want to use bike And maybe then I bought some bike and then if you don't go on the, the full course, which I hadn't at that stage, and I still haven't, I'll be honest with you, I start learning the tips on YouTube. I start learning the tips that you post. I start learning the tomorrow tooth tips and I'll start doing it. But I think that's a shortcut way because you've just described it. You went to the US seven times. You went to Italy. You reflected. So do you think there's a few more secrets or pearls that you can learn by actually attending these events than what you can see on Facebook? Yeah, there's a lot of tricks. You, 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 even like a, a talk to talk a conversation, we can share a lot of tricks that you might not able to to notice in the post in Facebook. It, it, it might be there, but you need someone to explain to you. So uh, with, for, for, with the bike clear, um, the only main problem, uh, not how to, to place the composite is how to get it out, it's like how to remove the excess. Uh, this is the only uh, the main trick, if you know how to do it, and it's easy to, to teach you how to do it, it's very simple just to, uh, uh, you know, you should know the, 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 the protocol. Speed. 
yeah, the protocol, and it will be easy for you because it's uh, if uh, if we can do it, everybody can do it. It is not something difficult. So I can share well, with you some tricks. The... Oh, amazing. And that's what today's about. I've got just three or four questions in the interest of time. It's going to be a 40 minute sort of episode uh, for the podcast. Mm. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to share like two, three questions, but we're going to go deep in those two, three questions. And then within mm. there, there will be another, I'm hoping some aha moments, like some dentists will be like, oh, so that's how it works, right? Because instead of mm. struggling, and like you said, sometimes to go on these courses to see people speaking, and then you learn so much more about different uh, techniques and methods and protocols. So before I get to that question, I mean, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to th show the case now to whet people's appetite. So I'm going to talk about this case uh, very soon, which is one of, one of my first bioclear cases. We actually did some whitening, we did some orthodontics, uh, and then we get from here. But then you see that there, if you zoom in, I mean, yeah, it looks good here. And I had to go back and fix it because look at that. I mean, that is some disgusting, ugly amount of flash, right? And you too fair, the patient was lovely. She didn't even notice or whatever, but I hated it. And I was like, oh my God, I need to learn a few things about this. Uh, and so we will be touching uh, on that very shortly, guys. But before we, I want to set the scene a little bit. Abdurrahman, you use all sorts of matrices, obviously, not just bioclear. Um, but obviously you have an affinity to bioclear, as you've described. You went on more for further training in the US about it. When should we, when do you not use bioclear? So in which cases do you think, okay, actually, you know what? I'm not going to use bioclear. So I want to actually start by what is the downside of bioclear? Why should you not use bioclear? Okay, so uh, as you mentioned, I, I don't use only bioclear, uh, 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 but uh, if you if you didn't lose the emergence profile, like uh, the, the cervical part, like the proximal cervical part of your tooth, you don't have to use bioclear. The myelar strip will work, or even like the posterior matrix from uh, Tour VM or any other company. Uh, you like place it upside down, so it will be enough for you. But you're still doing injection molding, so we're still doing. It's so we're talking lab. anterior, right? So let's just focus that. Yeah, we're talking anterior, yeah, yeah. obviously. Anterior, yep. so, anterior, so you can use yes. yeah any anything on its on its side, like you know the SB100 Garrison, the Tor VM, yes, uh, yes, you can all of these in sideways. If you if you didn't lost uh, the emergence right, even if you lost it, you can play with the, with uh, with the Tor VM, but you need some skills, like you have to. To, to open it a little bit so you can recreate the mission prof uh, missions profile. But the problem is that playing with this matter is crucial. So you, you might uh, end up with overhang and not smooth emissions profile. Pyclear helps you to get the better emissions profile. For the posterior, uh, Pyclear only works for the big space. Like uh, if you have a uh, uh, distance from the, 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 the cervical margin of your cavity and the nape tooth is quite uh, uh, large, so it uh, gave it give you back uh, the the better profile to get the best uh, location for your contact area. So uh, uh, if you have a small space or a small cavity, Tour VM even the flat or the curved like saddle from Tour VM it will work. So uh, I I combine saddle and uh, bio clear. Uh, sometimes I use bike clear uh, in some cases, and uh, I know that if I have used uh, Tour VM, it will work. But it's like I'm more biased to bike clear, to be honest, in some cases. But in some cases, this is the only option that I have to use the bike clear uh, matrices. This is about the matrix. Uh, but all of these, I do the same protocol, bike clear method regarding the injection molding protocol. And we can touch on that a little bit later, actually. But um, I learned that the hard way, other man, because I made the classic mistake, right? You you use the bioclip posterior because you want to. You want to, yeah, let's use a bioclip posterior, right? And and the, the distance between the, the cervical of one tooth and the other tooth is not big enough. And what you mm -hmm. get is you get the dimple, right? You get the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the sort of co you know, convexity inside your cavity. And, you know, you, mm -hmm. you do it once and you learn the hard way. But the beauty, I think, of the posterior bioclip is that some of these teeth, which in the past, I would have said the only way I can get a good contact is by doing indirect. It is now possible with the bioclear. Would you agree with that statement? Yes, yes. Before bioclear matrix, the, the, the curvature of the bioclear, um, and with the bioclear method, the injection molding, most of probably you will go for indirect because the packing, the, the old way we used to pack the composite, it end up usually in these deep cavities of voice. So usually go for indirect. So you make sure that your stretcher is smooth, like uh, contoured as uh, as you want. But the bike leader, it's no, it's it's very helpful. The only problem that you have to charge the patient reasonable price because you have done a, like a, a too much work and it's still it's a direct restriction. So this is the main problem. 
I think I don't know if it's me probably in, in England, but it's probably in Egypt also. Like charging oh, 100%. the patient. It's a, it's a problem here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so to, to charge appropriately, it's a great point you made there because when you're doing a bioclear method to rescue a tooth so that you no longer need to do indirect, you should not be using your normal restoration fee. It should not be a yeah. class two fee. It should be a higher fee because obviously the, the, the matrix costs more, but you've done extra training, but you're saving that patient from having indirect and you're really, you know, using something quite skillful to recreate that. So I think you made a fantastic real world point there that you need to charge appropriately. I didn't even sort of think to fathom that or, or, or make that into words, but I think you summarized that well. Um, the next thing I'm gonna show in the interest of time is I'm gonna go straight to a case uh, of excess, like you mentioned. So I'm gonna show, uh, share a case with everyone. Uh, so here we are. This lady, her name's Angela. Angela came to me and she said, hey, I don't like these uh, black triangles, or well, she didn't use that word, these holes between my teeth, uh, the color. Can we do something? I said, yes, we can do some Invisalign, which we did. And you can have a look at that lower incisor. I mean, we, we, we got a great result. Uh, actually, and Angela had a slightly reduced but healthy periodontium. And you'll find that the teeth derotate very quickly in these patients. But I was not satisfied because of this, right? You can see in the interproximal, the level of flash that we have, right? This is not, not appealing. This is not nice. So there's too much flash. So in fact, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this image smaller a bit and I'm just going to keep it here so that we can uh, reference it. In fact, I'll keep it like that. So my, my first question is, how do we deal with that excess? So what is the protocol to get rid of the excess? And then, the, then I will ask you, should we be having it in the first place or we should be veneering it and then there's no excess? So I'll come to that. But what is the protocol to remove excess efficiently and nicely? Okay, uh, so... First, let me let me ask you if you are planning to do indirect veneer in this case. So, uh, what the results you 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 might think that you will get? So you will get the same contact length probably because you have to close the black triangle, and you will go more palately so you and subgingivally so you can have a better immersion profile. Uh, I think uh, the main problem here it's not the excess interproximally the location of the line angle so your the line angle in this case is like um only in the middle of the tooth and the cervical part there is no line angle in the incisal edge as i can see here and it's more toward to the center so now you can see uh, a bulky interproximal area uh, and you can see because of the reflection of the two line angles that it is more toward to the center of the two centrals so if you just move the line angle toward to the proximal, you will have to remove a little bit of excess. So you can like uh, 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 push the line angle more uh, interproximally and uh, you will have uh, a bitter light reflection that make you feel better, that's more natural. This is the same results you get if you if your lab technician is not um, like doing it in the proper way and in giving you this kind of line angle. So it's only the line angles change the, the whole appearance. So if you, if you uh, if you put the line angle in the in the in, in the wrong location, the the shape will change dramatically if you if you try that. So how to know where your line angle is with the pencil, like regular pencil? Usually, I use the pencil in every case. So with the side of the pencil, let's say this is your central. Uh, let me make it look better. So this is the cervical part. So uh, you go with the side of the pencil and you just uh, move it like that and uh, you will have uh, 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 a marks with the pencil that indicate where is the uh, most elevated part of this area this is your line angle so just move it a little bit toward to the proximal make it more uh, uh, symmetrical because the line angle should end in the incisal edge if you can see closely the line angle didn't end in the incisal edge just uh, uh, vanished uh, before the incisal third so this is maybe uh, uh, the problem. So, so number one is that actually the way I was looking at it is, oh my gosh, there's excess. Let me get a burr to remove this excess. But really the, the more clever way to uh, approach this would be, let me just get the line angles to look good. And naturally by trying to achieve better line angles, we can remove the excess at the same time. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, this is the line angle. It changes the, 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 the shape, but it, you might have excess but it, it doesn't appear because you shape it probably. Mean excess, mean mm. volume. You will have the same excess if your patient seeking for changing the color. 
So let's say this patient is A3 and she wants to have a P1 composite, P1 color. So, so she has two options. Either we have to reduce from the labial surface to 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 like change the color, or if she doesn't want to 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 cut her teeth, so we have to add more volume. That's same for veneer. So if she if she wants to have indirect restriction and she doesn't want to prep to the dentin, so we we have to add more volume so the tooth will be a little bit a little bit bulky so i i told i tell the patient so what are the option the beauty with the bike clear that if your patient is uh um like having more retrocline uh teeth so it's not too much uh lapelly and he wants to change the color he wants to to realign the the restriction you don't have to cut any enamel just inject and there is no path of insertion there is no undercuts every uh, there is no problem with that you don't have to do indo sometimes even if you have deep bite the pipe clean method with the anterior composite with the deep bite patient to do veneer it's, it's it's not the best option with the crown it's impossible so you can just add more volume to the patient you know, like uh, reshaping the corridor of uh, hair smile so um and this is uh, uh, what I like about Pyclear. Regarding to go back to the excess, you have to use uh, your handpiece, uh, and I recommend you use electric handpiece, and you have to use it dry, no water, because the water will make you confused where the tooth, where the composites. So the debris, just follow the debris. It will tell you where is your composite, where is your line angle. And uh, it's much better to use multi-fluted carbide pair I used from Comet. I, I, I don't know the codes for the pair, but I can share with you later. Mm -hmm. So uh, this multi-fluted carbide pair, it cuts if you use it with the recommended speed, like 50,000 RPM uh, with a one to five hand piece. Uh, it cuts and also polish. So you are so safe when you're doing your uh, restriction. You know what you're doing. If you use it with the water, with the normal turbine in 400,000 RPM, you might end up removing all the composite and some of the, the enamel. I don't know if you had this problem, but I had it in the past before. I mean, yeah, when, when, when I'm removing attachments as well for Invisalign, then yeah, you want to be careful and you're using a carbide, but I completely agree. It, it's uh, efficient, but also it leaves that lovely shine, cutting and, mm -hmm. and polishing at the same time. So, so for example, in this case, you, you, you know, you might have a lot of palatal excess, right? So, it's, you know, your protocol is just to get the, the carbide, use it dry and just cut and polish that away, yeah? Yeah, but first you have to mark w which area you want to remove. So the pencil is mandatory. You even have even palatally? Yeah, because you don't know, you know exactly which the point that you want to move. Mm -hmm. It's like lab work. If you, if you have, uh, I don't know if you have uh, 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 gone before to the to lab and see how he's doing like a ceramics works. He used the pencil because he doesn't know which part is is like uh, the problem for the reflection of the light. The line angle you don't you, you cannot do that. Uh, otherwise, you, you have to use it dry and slowly. So you just move the debris and it needs a lot of experience. I don't like it even if I have the experience. I like the pencil. I I want. Uh, the easy way for me to do it. So I know that I need to remove this area, not this area. This area, the location is good, but this area, the location is not good. So that's a tip for me because I, I don't, I use a pencil labelly, but I've never thought to use it palatally, but it makes sense if I mark the area, I know when my end point is. So that's something that I definitely, I, I, I've learned there. But in this case, um, I think the mistake I made is, is this, right? My aim was actually not to veneer the facial. Because she, she had a really good result with the whitening. I actually wanted to stay just interproximal to close the black triangle only. Hence why I had to go back and then remove all this excess and then fix the line angles as well. So my question to you now is, when you're doing black triangle closure protocol, is it acceptable to just do the size only? Or is a recommended protocol to, uh, to almost get a very thin infinity veneer on the tooth? Okay, I, I I have done it in three ways. In the first way, I uh, only close the space, which is not, uh, I don't like it because you end up with a problem with the margins. Like you can do it infinite margin. Like but, this, uh, like this one. Yes, you can do it, but you will have a problem with the line angle, like also in this. The full veneer, it's not good for the for the good looking, good looking uh, teeth. But if you have a case with the bad looking teeth, you can do veneer. But in this case, 
you can do that. So this is the labial of the center. This is the cervical part. So when you do black triangle, you're covering uh, uh, the whole labial except the middle on the incisal. So the two black triangle joining here and ending infinity module to the center, which is the most important part for the aesthetics, you know, the translucence in this kind. So the, the cervical part is joining from here to here. It's much better for you for the discoloration later on because this patient, it might come after two to three years with some discoloration in the line in, in the, the uh, in the two restriction in the face, even if you, are, you, you have blasted the enamel and like ear region and uh, you have done a, a good proper bonding but uh, you might end up with uh, some discoloration so the ear it's the repolishing is much is, uh, uh, is easy and uh, you have the paste locking for the inside of the ear. but you have to uh, to inject it like if, if you have a black triangle and only in the cervical part like the black triangle interproximally don't in the composite just here the the the, the flowable should be over the incisal edge and now you finish it if you just close the black triangle, you'll not have the ability to have a, a symmetrical line angle. It should go over and remove it. It's how we do it. You have to have more and we shape the more. That's given me a lot of clarity, actually. So that makes sense. So those, those three ways you describe is, is brilliant. So one is doing the sides only, which I've tried to do here, but you can see it made a lot of mess for me and I had to go back and tidy it up and whatnot. The other way you suggested is to veneer it, but you're right. To get the best aesthetics, it may be a compromise. But the third way, I really like it. I love it to join the cervical and the black triangle areas. But you're right to allow it all to extend to the incisal ledge before you cut it back. So that is amazing. I'm going to take this photo off now. That's, a, that's really, really helped me. Um, then the next question I have then is... What are the, because you, you, you teach BioClear now, you, you have the learning center, mm -hmm. you're teaching BioClear. What is, and you may be seeing cases on social media of other doctors who post, right? And you want to help them, not to criticize them, but you want to help them because, you, you know, you help a lot of people. So what would you say are the most common mistakes you might see for uh, anterior and or posterior BioClear restorations? Just one each, maybe one anterior mistake, one posterior mistake. For the anterior, I think it's a proper selection for the matrix because posterior composite selection is like a little bit clear. For the anterior, uh, since by clear, they have a lot of matrices in the anterior and it got confused which matrix you, you should use. So the people uh, uh, sometimes uh, doesn't see the, the, the uh, end result of their project before they start the project. Like if they're doing the asthma occlusion, they just play the matrix and do the injection and imagine what it will look like and it might not be the best result that they were seeking for. So uh, I, I recommend the, pay, the people that who started doing aesthetics and tears with the BioClear, either they use the smile a wheel from BioClear, which is not the best way to, to start with, or they do uh, wax. So they know what exactly they want to, to do. So some people they have aesthetic eyes, so they can go directly and do it. But some people, if you are if you are not so much uh, expert with the uh, uh, aesthetic uh, zoom and uh, you not you haven't done uh, too much veneers, you haven't done too much smile uh, uh, like digital smile design before, and you go directly to do veneer with the composite with the bike clear, you might end up with uh, some not. It, it will results will not be satisfying for you, and you will hate the uh, the method especially with a lot of excess. For the posterior, uh, the main mistake with the bike is because it's a very thick matrix, especially the, the, the HD one, not the blue matrices. It's very uh, um, uh, stiff matrix, but also uh, thick. So you have to make sure that before, before building the proximal wall, if you're doing like split uh, injection molding, not the whole uh, cavity, you have to make sure that the matrix in complete touch with the adjacent tooth. So you have to do the push and pull welding technique. So David uh, uh, invented that because he knew he knew that uh, he knew that uh, the matrix um, sometimes moves because the 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 the, the ring is not fixing the matrix from the occlusal part, just from the cervical to do a lot of wedging and leave a space for the composite to over mold. So then the 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 matrix may go directly to the cavity. So you have to push it back and pull it. And you have to do some flowable spots to make it stable before you're building the composite. So a lot of people complained uh, from open contact from the perceived composite of the bike clear. So this is the only solution to get uh, the best result with this. 
And this is like you said, this is exactly why BioClear large cases posteriorly are not your regular class two fee. They are much more expertise needed, much more tips and tricks to, to save the patient from an indirect restoration, which goes back to exactly what you said earlier. So that's fantastic. Uh, if anyone's, uh, for those, everyone who's watching, if you have any qu comments or questions, I will be checking those in just a few moments so we can ask any um, questions for Abdul Rahman. Uh, but I'm going to ask him now about a question that I've thought of that maybe you get a lot, right? Maybe a common objection to uh, BioClear method is the fact that from, from what I've learned from watching David Clark's videos is you're after the etching and washing and you're getting everything dry, you are using the, 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 the prime and bond you are not uh, curing. You are then going for the, the flowable, heated flowable, and then heated composite all in one. So it becomes uh, everything to one. So then people will complain and say, hey, uh, if you're doing such a big restoration all at once, what about the C factor and stuff? So what can you tell all the haters? Okay, so uh, uh, first we have to, 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 to differentiate between uh, the enamel and linens. If you have only enamel, like in the acid occlusion, you don't need bond exactly. So you just need the flow. But we use a bond for that as a factor. So you don't have to cure the bond before curing a flow if you're doing only enamel. And uh, if you're doing an anterior composite, the C factor is it's it's not exist because for the asthma, you the composite go toward the one surface. And if you do by clear method, you covering the whole tooth at all shrinkage only in one surface. If you're doing a cavity with dentin, so no, he, David cured the, the, the first layer of adhesive to make sure the hybrid layer is completely uh, done. So he when, when he applies uh, the, the adhesive, uh, he only apply uh, on the dentin. And after that, he cure it, rub it for 20 seconds, two layers if you want, uh, much better, and you cure it. And we need when he applied the second layer of adhesive, he applied he applied uh, this layer in dentin and also enamel and uh, thin it away and uh, he doesn't cure it because uh, he used it as a as a flowable resin uh, and also he applied the flowable and uh, he then inject the composite. Uh, regarding the C factors in the posteriors, so the bike lead methods. Um, when you do a, when you do fill the proximal, you make sure that you over mold buccal and lingual, so you have a, a like a veneer, like a diastema closure for the anterior. So all the shrinkage, shrinkage go toward your uh, uh, to restoration. Yeah, I know inside the cavity, like inside the box in that the the, the, the glass tool box, which is hidden inside this veneer, we have some shrinkage, but it's not critical for us. Uh, because we leave this composite from the outside, we just make it knife edge like infinity margin in the back and lingual. So we still have shrinkage, but clinically we doesn't see any um, like uh, uh, bad outcome regarding this kind of shrinkage that it's maybe inside the cavity. And if you have uh, followed the literatures, like layering, uh, yeah, it decreases the shrinkage a little bit, but it it's one hundred percent cause uh, uh, avoids, and the voids is much more. Uh, uh, critical than the shrinkage because we can um, play another way to uh, to overcome this shrinkage like what we have we have said the injection molding and changing the light cures um, do soft to start and, and it's, there's a lot of ways to to overcome this shrinkage so um, for the posterior we do over molding for the anterior there is no factor there is no c factor we just cover the whole tooth and for the asthma you have only one surface and regarding the flow uh, the, the reason if you have dentin, you have to cure the first layer, and when you apply the, the second layer, you just, you just use it as a surfactant. And there is a, a demonstration video uh, for David when he stained uh, the flow with, with the green and uh, the, the, the adhesive with the um, red. And uh, when he applied the post uh, adhesive and, uh, and the flow, well, and he injected the paste, uh, there is no red and green is, uh, 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 stayed in the cavity. So... You, you just use it as a way to flow the paste inside the cavity. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that. So you know, when you put the heated paste in, the flowable and the bond, which is a surfactant, it's a great term to use, mm -hmm. uh, all just comes away. But I think for, for those that might be using BioClear for the first time, like there will be flash. It's over molding. And sometimes some people get put off by that. They think, oh my gosh, you take the matrix off and there's all this mess. But if you've done it all correctly, you should be able to visualize exactly where you need to finish and quite efficiently using the techniques you describe, be able to get rid of that, right? Yeah, I, I have a trick for the posterior and for the anterior. So for the posterior, 
when you have a class two restriction, like let's say occlusal surface and proximal surface. So you do the cavity and uh, for the proximal, you, you, there is no one have a problem to remove the excess because you follow the, the adjacent margin bridge. So it's not uh, too much difficult. For the occlusal surface, this is the problem. So, because when you do the injection and uh, start with the proximal and go occlusally, uh, you don't know how to play with the cusp. You don't know which kind of inclination of the cusp you have to do it. So, before do the injection uh, for the whole cavity, when you do the beveling for the occlusal cusp, do a flob ring in the cusp tip, flob very thin layer of the flob ring, cure it. So when you do the injection and you play with the plastic instrument and you tilt it like that, you, your plastic instrument will hit this cured flobble uh, 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 ring. And you know that this is your cusp tip. So you incline your plastic instrument in the way that following the neighbor adjacent teeth, like following the fossa for the adjacent teeth. And no, now, now you, you, you have done the, the probable inclination before uh, uh, you're curing. And this flow ring will give you more, a little bit excess. So when you do the finishing, you make sure that you didn't, you, you didn't remove all the composite and you end up with the, uh, like prepped enamel that you have uh, beveled before your curing composite. Sometimes when you do the injection molding in a, a beveled enamel and you finish it, you, you, you see that you, you removed all the restriction and end up with the, uh, um, uh, rough enamel surface. So this is a tip for, for the posterior. For the anterior, and also for the posterior, you have to split the cavity if it's too much for you. For the anterior, um, for the class three, I think there is no one have a problem with the class three because it's a half restriction you can follow. For the diastema closure and uh, for the veneering, uh, like if you're doing a whole surface, split it, split it. Do the proximal, like mesial, cure it, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, you have either two options. Uh, you can do the distal and join together and finish it, or you can do uh, finish the, the this mesial surface, irreparation, H and bond, and do the other surface, so you can follow it. But this is not too much good. So you can ha split the cavity and don't do like four teeth uh, all in row. Just do one tooth finish it to like 20% of finishings because you're following the adjacent teeth. And when you finish it, go the other tooth and go the other tooth. For the palatal surface, because a lot of problem with the palatal surface that uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to have too much high spot and you don't know which, what, how much amount of composite gets you very messy. Uh, so um, uh, I, I shape the palatal surface before shaping the labial surface because some people start with the labial surface and when they end with the labial surface and uh, let's say they are, re they are replacing a, a fracture syndrome. There is two millimeter of the, compo of the tooth that has, been uh, 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 has gone and he uh, replacing uh, this uh, part. And he's trying to shape the tooth from the labial surface. And after removing the rubber dam, he checked the occlusion in, and he see that he has like the, uh, he has to remove a lot of palatal surface and, he, and after he have, have removed the, the excess from the palatal surface, he ending up with a very thin incisal edge. So start mm. with the palatal surface, shake your occlusion, and after that go for the labial surface. This is maybe some tricks that came to my mind now. They're fantastic. Oh my God, they're, they're so good. They're so good. I just want to clarify one of the tips just so I make sure I understood it correctly. Uh, did I understand you correctly that when you're doing a black triangle of one tooth, one incisor, let's say, in as part of many, but you, you obviously do one tooth at a time, as you said, which makes perfect sense. But then you do the mesial and you cure it and then do the distal and cure it and let them join together. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, if you if you are afraid of, from the lot of excessive composite, I do the okay. whole tooth, but it, it needs time to uh, to accept this excess. So I have yeah. done that before. Like I used to split the cavities. I used to use the syringe, not compules, because in Egypt we didn't have too much compules. I had to get it from US sometimes. So uh, we use only syringe. So with the syringe, you cannot do the two surface at, at one time because you have to insert the plastic instrument. So I split the cavity. But also you have to place the matrix 
uh, for the adjacent cavity, so you can split the space between the two uh, teeth. So if you do black triangle for for, for 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 central, it's also a black triangle for the lateral. So you have to place the matrix for the lateral and the central, so you're not ending up with a like bulky image profile at the end. That's fantastic. So yeah, obviously preserve the space to actually fill mm -hmm. the lateral on the other black triangle. Uh, that's that's fantastic. But yeah, I, you know, you, you raise a good point there about doing the mesial and distal and splitting it. But sometimes I worry that if you split it, then uh, you get like a join in the middle. Uh, but I guess after the, the polishing, that's not so obvious. But, but this is why you no, do it all at once, it, right? Because you it, want it to join together. Because when you do the other surface, you do also flowable and paste, so it will join. It will be okay. Okay. And also you can, La for, yeah. for the black triangle, you don't have to do the paste and flowable because paste and flowable is too much excess. So black triangle, you can use only flow. Amazing. So the real tip there. So black triangle only use plurable. I like to use that genial um, plurable. You know, the genial anterior, the, the strong is like a gold um, sort I of a tip. Uh, it, it, is that the flowable that you would recommend or any flowable? Because I, I do like the idea of the strength that one has. A genial is called a lot of people who uh, they do uh, injection flowable technique. They do use uh, the genial flowable. I have used it only in the course when I when I did the course with the uh, injection flowable. But I use only three M because I, I used to use it. So my opinion will be completely biased. I am using three M because I use it for for a long time and uh, I like the results. Sometimes I use the supplied. The new one is very good cool though sometimes mm -hmm. and I like not too much but 3M the portfolio of the of the company with the color because you have a lot of colors if you want to select between body colors B1, B2, E1, mm -hmm. E2 uh, like a lot of shapes and all the colors has a flowable with the same uh, uh, properties with the same match of the color so you can solve all the problems. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to check the question. If there's any questions, I'm going to check that. But while I'm checking for questions, I've got a question for you, which is syringes, right? Like syringes of composite. How do you get that sufficiently heated to be able to use the bioclay technique? And then are there any long term effects of uh, heating the entire syringe? Uh, I don't know if that's what you do, but I, I would just I would just want to uh, want you to answer that while I'm uh, checking for any questions. OK, so. Uh... There, there is no company approved, like uh, scientifically approved, that they can that we can heat uh, their composite except 3M's, 3M, one year ago. Like uh, before 2019, uh, there was no approval from the company. But there is a lot of research that's saying that heating composite increased the, the the physical and the, the you know the the heating, the flowability, the adaptation. A lot of good research, like pushing people to hit the composite. So 3M, they approved uh, two years ago, one year and a half, to heat the capsules uh, of their bulk fill and, uh, and uh, Feltex Supreme Ultra. And also they approved to he heat the flowable syringe. So the flowable is a syringe and reheat it like it's okay. So regarding 3M, it, they said it's okay. I do heat what, whatever composite I use in, in the office and I didn't see any problem like clinical problem. I didn't know exactly inside what happening in the in this specific type of, of resin, but from the research and from the 3M recent research, I think there is no problem. But I had a problem with the micro hybrid composite. Micro hybrid, it gets more flowy. So I use it for only cement in the air crustration. If for, for a nano hybrid, it's more flowy than the nano. So the paste composite I have heated uh, was uh, 350 XT. I don't know what the name of uh, 3M Supreme Ultra in UK, the same for US because the name in Egypt is completely different. So it's Supreme Ultra from 3M, the paste one for heating. But other products I also heated was very good. For the syringe, the main problem when you heat it, when you scoop from the syringe, it became it becomes more sticky, so you have to handle it like uh, easily because it will stick to the plastic instrument. Compules is much better for the direction, so you can split. If there is no problem in UK with the compules, you can split the cavity with the compules. 
Yeah, so we, we I use compules quite a bit. We also have syringes as composite, but you're right. It does become a bit more difficult to use the syringes, but it's, it's good to see that you, you you supported that with some 3M literature that it doesn't seem to be a big issue. And also in your clinical experience, that's not a big they issue. Did only, they did only for the flow. They did only for the flow. Okay. Mm. okay, fair enough. Um, right, I'm just having a look. So we're getting a lot of love. You know, Zach is there, Mashiak is there saying hi and whatnot. Uh, and, and and now people are, yeah, Masik is, do, that... is doing a, a, a very good trick. He, he told it to me. He, he makes the computes like he can do A2 and A3 both together inside the cavity. He do that. Wow. I, yeah, Ma Masik is a is is a wizard we all know that anyway uh, anyway so that that was all the main question i wanted to ask i just wanted to uh, say to you thanks so much for coming on it was a very uh, nice 40 minute uh, sh short, uh, short and sweet episode but loads of tips about how to clean the excess the using the pencil palatally how to sequence your mesial and distal and we also talked a little bit about, about the c factor and also using the the heated flowable and if there's any long term effects so i think we covered a lot of sort of scientific stuff but also clinical gems in there as well. So I really appreciate that. I will be putting this podcast on for those to listen to as well because uh, it wasn't too visual. So I think the, the list usual listener um, uh, audience will be able to gain a lot from this as well. But uh, I always get swamped with messages when I get a, a speaker like stuff like, okay, how can we learn more uh, from Abdulrahman Tofik? So what are the pages they need to follow so they can get more of your content? Because uh, honestly, guys, like if, you, if you're not doing by clear and if you want to start by getting inspired by facebook or if you're doing uh by clear and you want to see the level at which you can do it to i mean you should definitely check out abdul Rahman's cases uh where can they follow your cases and, and educational content and any upcoming courses uh so uh uh first to to to, to see a lot of cases to buy clear we, we uh in the facebook we uh, there is tumor tooth group for sure uh me and uh, all the, the my friends and tumor tooth and all the dentists that he posts in the in the page they post a lot of uh, uh injection molding maybe i'm more uh, like I'm posting more cases but there is a lot of cases there and there is also uh um a website for tumor tooth there is some videos educational videos uh, that I have recorded and also Mashik and all these guys recorded for the bike clear for my courses, uh, uh, mainly in Egypt. And I also go, sometimes I went to Europe, to Italy, to Estonia and, uh, maybe UK. I don't know if I, if I ha if I can go to there soon after the Corona. Uh, so if you want to have course, you're welcome to come to Egypt for sure, uh, to do the bike clear in the landing center uh maybe in may david clark is coming to egypt in august if wow he, yeah for for three days course and uh wow, in, in sure. may or in august in august david come Fantastic. he's coming we, we 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 will open the learning center the official opening it will be uh when it came, david uh, comes in august but we will have soft opening from in may so you can come it will be me and david uh, it will be good uh to uh, to come to Egypt in the summer and uh, have some uh, good holidays with the family and do the course, so it would be nice. That's a great idea, and I'm I'm, I'm a big fan of traveling for courses, because especially now more than ever. We need to travel. Gosh, I'm desperate to travel, uh, and I'm a big fan of uh, having tax deductible holidays so you can get your flights and hotels tax deductible uh, and you get to experience a new country and 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 learn. And the fact that David's coming, that's really piqued my interest so maybe i will see you in egypt uh in in august uh for sure i don't i don't know about may because we're all worried about pandemic have, I, yeah i, have, I think have I will. you been have you been in egypt before or not uh, i only went sharm el sheikh and oh my gosh i was in sharm el sheikh when all the sort of the, the you know the plane bombings happened and i was stranded in sharm el sheikh and stuff yeah, so uh, i want to <laughs> Yeah. I want to yeah. experience. Yeah. <laughs> I want to experience a, a, a better way of, of, of Egypt. So yeah, August Egypt. Uh, I, I will pitch it to my wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, you thank you so be, much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it, bro. Thanks so much. Okay, and on the on the website, uh, protrusive.co.uk, I will add once this goes on properly as a as a podcast episode. I will put the links as well, so people can easily find that, including the tomorrow mm -hmm. tooth videos as well, like you mentioned. So I will do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.